Now, Lisa, I would just give folks um, a minute or two as attendees are starting to populate. No worries. Good morning, everyone. We're going to start shortly. Welcome and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Understanding Your Electricity Bill, hosted by the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. My name is Elisa Rodriguez Fury, and I am a public relations officer for the Power Enterprise for the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. I will be facilitating today's webinar. Today's webinar will be available in Cantonese and Spanish. Este webinar está disponible en español también. Tenemos nuestra intérprete María aquí. Joan, can you repeat that please in Cantonese? 今日的講座會有廣東話翻譯嘅. Thank you, Joan. Before we start, I would like to remind everyone of a few housekeeping items. Today's meeting is being recorded. To activate live transcription, please select the CC or closed captioning button at the bottom of your screen and click live transcript. To participate in Q&A, please select the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to type in your question. To join interpretation with our Cantonese and Spanish interpreters, Wei Quen and Maria, Click the interpretation world icon in the menu bar and then select the language channel you want to join. Para unirse a nuestro canal de interpretación y escuchar en español, por favor selecte, seleccione el mundito en, en su barra de abajo y um, seleccione el lenguaje de español. Um, Joan, could you please repeat that in Cantonese? Thank you. 如果你要廣東話翻譯,請按下底的地球掣,跟著按 中文. Thank you. Uh, now the interpreters are ready for you in the interpretation channels, um, so you can go there. Thank you. Today's webinar is being hosted by the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. We are a department of the city and county of San Francisco. We provide high quality drinking water to the city of San Francisco and wholesale water to three Bay Area counties. We also provide your clean, reliable energy to San Francisco residents, businesses, and municipal departments. We manage the collection and treatment of wastewater, which helps protect public health and the environment. Our mission is to provide our customers with high quality, efficient, and reliable water, power, and sewer services. Also to be inclusive of environmental and community interests, and to sustain the resources entrusted to our care. The San Francisco Public Utilities Commission has been providing clean, safe, reliable public power to San Francisco for more than 100 years. Today, we continue to serve as the city's local clean electricity provider. We offer two electricity programs that serve San Francisco. The first one being Hetch Hetchy Power, is San Francisco's public power utility and energizes some of San Francisco's most important municipal assets. This includes our own street lights, our airport, the general hospital, public libraries, public schools, and Muni. Hetch Hetchy Power also serves many affordable and public housing sites and new develop developments like the San Francisco Chipyard and the Salesforce Transit Center. Secondly, the SAPUC also manages Clean Power Safe, our newest program, which is San Francisco's Community Choice Aggregation Program, or also called CCA. Clean Power Safe provides renewable power for more than 380,000 residential and commercial customers across our city. Through Hetch Hetchy Power and Clean Power Safe, the SAPUC provides more than 70% of the electricity consumed in San Francisco today. 
Today's webinar will be broken into three distinct parts focused on different aspects of your electricity bill. Part one, winter energy bills. We're gonna start off by explaining why you might be experiencing a higher energy bill during the winter months. Then we'll go into part two, understanding your bill. We will then talk, walk you through your monthly electricity bill, and we're gonna explain the details of the bill for both Clean Power SF and Hetch Hetchy Power customers. And then we'll go finally into part three, tips for managing your bill. We will provide you with tips on how to save energy and build assistance programs that are available to help manage your bill year round. We will then have a Q&A session with, with our panelists after this presentation. Uh, we will try to answer all of your questions. As a reminder, please have a Q&A. Um, please use the Q&A function in your menu bar to submit questions. We will aim to answer as many of your, of your questions as we can during today's webinar. So to kick off today's webinar, I would like to introduce our three presenters today. All of them, I have the pleasure of working here at the SAPUC. Um, our first presenter is Sid Cutter. Sid is a utility specialist on the risk management and business analysis team here at the SAPUC. Sid has worked for electric utilities and energy developers such as Apex Clean Energy, Southern California Edison, Pacific Corp, and NB Energy in similar roles that focus on economic, financial, and quantitative analysis and risk management. Our second presenter is Joanne Wu. Joanne is a utility analyst with the Clean Power SF customer data, billing, and programs team here at the SAPUC as well. She implements customer programs, conducts data analysis, and develops data reports. And finally, we have John Bidwell, uh, who is also a utility specialist with the customer engagement group. Mr. Bidwell has an extensive history in the electric utility industry, working both in the public and private sectors. Most recently, John is serving um, a role within the, within the customer engagement group, um, and he is the SAPUC's point person for San Francisco's existing affordable housing facilities served by Clean Power SF and Hetch Hetchy Power. I will now turn, turn it on over to Sid Cutter, um, who will begin today's webinar. Thank you. Take it away, Sid. Thanks, Elisa. Good morning, everyone. As Elisa just mentioned, my name is Sid Carter. I'll be providing some context around why energy bills are higher in the winter. Next slide, please. We're often asked by our customers, why are energy bills higher in the winter? Well, that's what we're talking about today. Our goal today is to walk you through some of the factors that impact costs for electricity rate payers, not just in San Francisco, but in the Bay Area and California. Slide. A key reason our energy bills are higher in the winter is our demand is higher in the winter. We live in a winter peaking region. This chart shows that during the 12 months between December 2022 and November 2023, the highest residential demand was in the month of December and during the winter months, the blue bars on the left. And the lowest electricity consumption is in the summer months the yellow bars in the middle. San Francisco is a winter peaking region. By way of contrast, would you expect electricity bills in Arizona are higher in the winter or the summer? Understandably, Arizona is a summer peaking region. A chart like this for Arizona would show the highest residential demand in July and August, and the spike in those summer months would be more extreme than what we're seeing here in the winter bars for San Francisco. Next slide. Here in San Francisco, many homes don't even use air conditioning during the summer. During the winter though, homes around here use their heaters and that boosts household demand. And in buildings without effective insulation, heaters 
need to work harder and consume even more electricity. Next slide. In addition to the colder weather, there are other seasonal factors that increase demand. This slide presents some examples. Less daylight translates into the need for more lighting, which increases electricity consumption. Colder weather and rain during the winter mean we spend more time indoors, where we consume more electricity for indoor activities at home. And holiday activities like Emily gatherings or holiday lights can top off that boost in demand. Now we're going to shift the discussion from talking about demand for electricity to talking about supply of energy, the sources of energy. The first thing to note about this slide is that energy comes in the form of natural gas and electricity. Natural gas and electricity are used for different applications. Natural gas, a fossil fuel, is an energy source for some appliances such as space heating, water heating, and cooking. Electricity is most often used to power things like your washing machine, dishwasher, refrigerator, air conditioner, and lighting. For most residents in San Francisco, the cost for both natural gas service and electricity service appear on your monthly PG&E bill. So when you see a higher total bill, it is likely due to the combination of your natural gas use and electricity consumption. A higher winter bill may reflect higher consumption, but it may also reflect higher prices or rates, such as higher commodity prices. In the winter of 2022-23, a year ago, the price of both natural gas and electricity commodities hit extraordinarily high levels. Thankfully, today's price levels have retreated from those high levels a year ago. A key factor that is contributing to higher energy bills this winter has less to do with the season and more to do with the timing of a recent rate increase implemented by PG&E for electricity services as of January 1st, 2024. Many of you have seen the headlines or heard about this rate change on the news. You may even experience the higher rates and a higher bill this month or next month. A PG&E bill covers several types of costs. The key costs are operating expenses, associated with the natural gas and electricity commodities and the expense of moving the commodity from its source to the end user, like a household or a business. But the rates are also used to recover non-service costs. For example, the regulated return to PG&E shareholders. So let's talk through what's going on with PG&E's rate increase and what this means. Here's a quick overview of the new PG&E rates. Rate increases were proposed by PG&E, debated in a California Public Utilities Commission hearing, and then approved by the California Public Utilities Commission. The CPUC approved the significant electric rate changes for PG&E on November 16th, 2023. Those new rates went into effect on January 1st, 2024. The rate increases affect the electricity side of the PG&E bill and apply to PG&E generation and transmission and distribution services. As of January 1st, all PG&E customers will experience a rate increase, including customers who receive their electricity generation services from CCAs, like Clean Power SF. CCA stands for Community Choice Aggregator. CCAs are not-for-profit programs that purchase electricity for communities. The electricity is then delivered 
by PG&E using PG&E's wires to the CCA's customers. The typical PG&E residential customer bill will increase by over $30 per month in 2024, even for summer months. This is for both electricity and gas combined. Note that the impact on a bill will vary depending on a household's usage, what part of the state the household is in, and programs in which the household chose to enroll. So why are PG&E rates going up and buy so much? Well, this is part of a trend that we are seeing with PG&E rates since the company exited bankruptcy in 2020. Over the last four years alone, PG&E bill charges have increased by more than 50%. PG&E insists the increases are necessary to meet their wildfire prevention obligations, which includes upgrades to the power grid, conducting vegetation management, and undergrounding power lines in high-risk fire areas. It is important to note that these bills or this Bill, these bill increases are for PG&E services only, not the electricity services that CCAs like Clean Power SF provide. Charges for Clean Power SF services, which appear on your PG&E bill, did not change as of January 1st. So to finish part one, of this webinar, let's summarize why you might be experiencing higher energy bills this winter. First, the key contributing factor this winter is PG&E rates for electricity services increased as of January 1st. That includes a 42% increase in PG&E delivery charges compared to a year ago in January, 2023. These increases will go toward their wildfire prevention obligations, which includes upgrades to the power grid, conducting vegetation management, and undergrounding power lines and high-risk fire areas. Second, while increases in the price of natural gas can amplify the cost of increased consumption of natural gas and electricity during the winter, thus far this winter, Prices for natural gas and, and electricity are significantly lower than they were last winter. Finally, in general, energy usage shifts during the winter when households spend more time indoors and require more energy for heating and more lighting, among other things. We'll talk later in today's presentation about ways you can save money by reducing your energy use. Now, I'll hand the microphone to my colleague, Joanne, for part two of the webinar. Thanks, Sid. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joanne Wu, and I'm a utility analyst with the Clean Power SF Customer Data Billing and Programs team. I'm going to be walking us through your electricity bill, but first we want to provide a little more context about electricity service in San Francisco. There are multiple providers of electricity service. PG&E is one provider, but the SFPUC also provides electricity services to thousands of residents and businesses in the city. The SFPUC offers two electricity services in San Francisco, Hetch Hetchy Power and Clean Power SF. As we mentioned, Hetch Hetchy Power is San Francisco's public power utility. It operates as a full service utility meaning customers do not pay PG&E, they pay the SFPUC directly for electricity service. Hetch Hetchy, Hetch Hetchy Power serves about 6,000 customer accounts in San Francisco, including affordable and public housing, and many city facilities and services like Muni, our public libraries, the airport, and public schools. The SFPUC also manages Clean Power SF, San Francisco's Community Choice Aggregation, or CCA program, 
which provides renewable power for more than 380,000 residential and commercial customers across the city. This program operates as a hybrid program with PG&E. Our customers pay a PG&E bill that includes the services that Clean Power SF provides. If you are a Clean Power SF customer, that means Clean Power SF replaces PG&E as the buyer or supplier of your electricity. We will be talking more about this in a few minutes. Together, Hatch Hatchy Power and Clean Power SF serve more than 70% of the electricity demand in San Francisco with cleaner energy. In this section, we'll discuss electricity rates in general, how we differ from PG&E, and how to read your electricity bill, whether you are a Hatch Hatchy Power or a Clean Power SF customer. As a power provider, the SFPUC currently offers cheaper electric rates for both our Clean Power SF and Hetch Hetchy Power customers compared to PG&E. We also set our rates annually through a transparent process with local public oversight. Our rates are set once a year every July 1st. We are a not-for-profit public agency focused on our customers and we don't have to worry about profits for shareholders. We reinvest our revenues back into programs and services that benefit San Francisco. Clean Power SF customers continue to see savings due to lower Clean Power SF generation rates compared to PG&E. Clean Power SF rates for generation service are set annually and did not change as of January 1st. A typical residential Clean Power SF customer will see about an $8 savings each month by getting their generation service from Clean Power SF rather than PG&E. Hetch Hetchy Power continues to offer the lowest residential electricity rates in San Francisco. Average residential customers on our electric heating rate pay about $99 a month for electricity service. This is lower than what customers would pay if they were on PG&E service. So what are electric rates really? Electric rates are the cost of using electricity in your home or business. Usually, it's a cost per energy consumed, often described as a kilowatt hour. Generally, electric rates cover the costs of producing or acquiring power, also known as generation, and delivering that energy, which is referred to as distribution and transmission. Electric rates vary based on the time of day, whether you are a business or resident, the season, if you have solar panels on your roof, and more. In general, the total cost of your electricity bill is based on how much energy you use. This is usually seen on the first page of your bill. There are also a variety of rate plans you may see depending on what type of customer you are, such as time of use, tiered rates, or electric vehicle. And finally, if you qualify for and are enrolled in discount programs like CARE or FARA or the Customer Assistance Program, these can help lower your costs. So what does the billing process look like? If you are a Hetch Hetchy Power customer, you receive a monthly bill from San Francisco Water Power Sewer or SFPUC for your electricity service. If you are a Clean Power SF customer, you receive a monthly bill from PG&E that includes Clean Power SF generation charges. Okay, so let's dive into our first bill. We'll start with Clean Power SF customers and look at your monthly bill you receive from PG&E. This is the first page or summary of your bill. It provides an overview of your entire bill, including both electricity and gas charges. Your account number is at the top of the page. This 10-digit number identifies your account, and you'll need this to check your account status or make changes to your service. PG&E de electric delivery charges is the cost for the delivery of electricity to your home or business. It includes the cost of maintaining the power lines and responding to outages in your area. PG&E sets the rates that determine these charges. Clean Power SF electric generation charges are the cost of sourcing the electricity used at your home or business. This is not an additional charge. This charge replaces the charge you would receive from PG&E if PG&E sourced your electricity instead of Clean Power SF. 
the total amount due shows the amount you need to pay each month. If your account is enrolled in a program that provides a discount, such as CARE or FARA, the program will be noted here under Your Enrolled Programs. You'll also see the discount you're receiving here. On page two, you'll see a more detailed breakdown of PG&E's delivery charges. On this page, you can see your rate schedule. A rate schedule indicates the type of rate that you are enrolled in. For this customer, they are on a time of use rate schedule, which means when you use electricity is just as important as how much you use. Customers on a time of use rate schedule pay more for electricity used during the peak time of four to 9 p.m. every day. Most residential customers are on this rate schedule. Next, you'll see the delivery charges, which are based on how much energy you used. For time of use rates, you'll also see whether the energy was used during peak or off peak times. PG&E's rates for delivery services increased as of January 1st. This is where you may notice increased charges compared to your previous bill. The generation credit is the amount PG&E would have charged you if they provided your generation service. Because you are a Clean Power SF customer, PG&E credits this amount back to you. There is a list of other fees that we won't go into details for. An example is the franchise fee surcharge, which is collected by PG&E for the right to use public streets to run electric service. Next, we have the Clean Power SF generation charges detail page. You'll see the generation charges for this customer, which again covers the cost of sourcing or providing the electricity. You can also see the details of this customer's time of use. With 305 kilowatt hours of off-peak electricity used and about 111 kilowatt hours of on-peak electricity used. If you are a Super Green customer, you will see the line item here as well. Super Green is our 100% California Renewable Portfolio Standard Certified Electricity Service for a small additional fee. For the average resident, it costs about $3 more a month than our green option, which is at least 60% renewable under California standard. I will now hand it off to my colleague, John Bidwell, who will walk through the Hetch Hetchy Power customer bill and talk about bill assistance and discounts. Thank you, Joanne, and good morning, everybody. I'm John Bidwell. I'm a utility specialist here at the PUC. Now that we looked at a PG&E bill for Clean Power SF customers, let's quickly review the Hetch Hetchy Power Bill. The Hetch Hetchy Power Bill is more straightforward since we handle both the generation and delivery of electricity to customers. First, you have the account number, which is yours and yours only. Then we have the rate schedule, and this is very important. Um, in this example, uh, R2 is shown, and this means that the customer is enrolled in our customer assistance program and receives a 30% discount on their bill. We'll talk about that more in a moment. There is also a more detailed view of the charges. Hetch Hetchy power customers are charged for how much energy they use, not when they use it. Um, this is explained a bit more in the next slide. And at the top, you'll see the total amount due and the due date. The Hetch Hetchy Power customer is charged based on a tiered usage structure. The total amount of electricity you use within a month of the billing period determines how tiered rates are applied. And again, rates are not based on when you use electricity. If you use 418 kilowatt hours or less, you get the lowest tier rate. This is the yellow area here on this graph. And if you use more than that amount, you will fall into the tier two and that that's the blue section here and 
the kilowatt hour, once you spill into this tier two, costs about 20% more than the electricity in the tier one. Uh, this typically applies to many residential units with say more than one or two inhabitants uh, living in the unit. Now, if you use more than 960 kilowatt hours in the month, you spill from tier two into tier three and you are billed at the tier three rate, which is most expensive. And it's only for that additional electricity use. And this results in a higher charge in your bill. It's important to note that the customers only pay the tier rate on the additional amount of electricity consumed within that tier. So you don't get charged the highest rate if you use go into the highest tier only for the kilowatt hours in that tier. So we are here to help. We understand your electricity bill can be a bit confusing and you may still have questions. Whether you are a Clean Power SF customer or a Hetch Hetchy customer, you can contact our customer service team and they are happy to answer any questions you have about your bill at these numbers and these websites. Next, I want to talk about how to manage your bill. In this section, we'll talk about different ways you can lower your energy bill. First, we'll discuss assistant programs for the Clean Power SF customers, and then review options for the Hetch Hetchy customers. The California alternate, alternate Rates for Energy, or CARE, and the Family Electric Rate Assistance, or FERA, are monthly bill discount programs available to Clean Power SF customers. CARE provides about a 20% discount or more on both the electricity and gas portions of your energy bill. FARA is a program for households with three or more people and qualified customers receive an 18% discount on, on their electricity. CARE and FARA are both state programs and they are administered by PG&E. To enroll online, visit the website or call the pg PG e number on the screen. Next, I'd like to talk about budget billing. This is a program that allows customers, customers to pay the same or equal amounts for their energy bill every month throughout the year. Your bill is determined by past energy usage and, and it is averaged over the previous 12 months. Enrolling in budget billing can help you avoid the spikes in your energy bill during the winter months, like we showed in a previous slide. You can enroll online at this website at pg&e.com slash budget billing, or you can call the eight number 100 number listed here. There's also the medical baseline program. And it applies where uh, a customer may have certain medical conditions which require medical devices that can use up a lot of electricity. The medical baseline program allows qualifying customers to use more energy at a lower rate. <clears throat> Some examples of qualifying medical devices include a motorized wheelchair or a scooter or a respirator or a CPAP machine. To get more information or to apply, visit the website or call the number on this slide. The Relief for Energy Assistance Through Community Help Program, or REACH, is a program that can help customers with low incomes pay for energy during a crisis or hardship, like having a past due balance, receiving a power disconnection notice, or even after having their power disconnected. The program can provide an energy credit of up to $1,000 per year. To get more information or to see if you qualify, contact 
the Dollar Energy Fund at the phone number on the screen. The Arrearage Management Plan, or AMP, is a debt forgiveness plan to help those who have experienced hardships. Eligible cust customers can have up to $8,000 in unpaid balances forgiven. Some of the eligibility requirements include being enrolled in the CARE and FARA programs that I spoke of a moment ago. Um, you knew the customer needs to owe at least $500 on their electric bill or 250 on their gas bill and have bills that are more than 90 days past due. The additional requirement is that the customer has made at least one on-time payment on their account. Uh, for the AMP program, call the number on the screen or go through your pg e online account to apply. Super Green Saver is a clean power SF program that provides 100% renewable portfolio standard certified renewable energy and a 20% discount to qualifying customers every month. To be eligible, customers must live in certain areas of the city like the Bayview, Portola, or Soma neighborhoods and be eligible or enrolled in the CARE FARA discount programs. The program is near capacity and a few spots remain. However, customers are encouraged to learn more and apply for the wait list at the website listed on the screen. If space becomes available in the program, you'll be contacted by, the, by a Clean Power SF customer service representative and enrolled in the program if you qualify. You could then expect to see the discount on your bill within a few months. Now we'll turn to assistance programs for Hetch Hetchy Power customers. The Hetch Hetchy Power Customer Assistance Program, or CAP, provides a 30% discount to qualifying Hetch Hetchy residential customers. In order to qualify, you must have a Hetch Hetchy Power bill in your name, and you must fall within the program income guidelines. Uh, to inquire or apply for this program, call the 415 number listed here, or you can access the program through the website shown here as well. The Medical Necessity Assistance Program, or MNAP, is a program for Hetch Hetchy customers that is very similar to pg es Medical Baseline Program. Qualified households can use more energy at the lowest and most affordable energy tier. That was the yellow tier in the prior slide. Some examples of qualifying devices include sleep apnea monitoring, a monitor, a respirator, a dialysis machine, or other devices. To look at other qualifying devices and conditions, you can go to the website listed on the screen. Note that at a that a customer can only be enrolled in the CAP or the MNAP program, but not both programs. Now we'll talk about some options available for both Clean Power SF and Hetch Hetchy Power customers. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP, is a federal program administered by the state that can help you get back on track if you get behind in your bills. For qualified customers, LIHEAP can work with your electricity provider, that would be, in this case, Hetch Hetchy Power, to apply a one-time bill credit to help with energy bills and prevent utility shutoffs. To look into eligibility and apply, call the number uh, on the screen here or visit the website listed for LIHEAP. For both Clean Power SF and Hetch Hetchy Power, if you ever get behind on your bill, we're here to help. If you're a Clean Power SF customer, you can call PG&E 
to get an extension on your bill or set up a payment plan. Hachechi customers can call the number on the screen to set up a payment plan to help you get back on track. For Clean Power SF customers, in it matters when you use energy. In general, the less energy you use, the more money you save. However, again, for most Clean Power SF customers, when you use the energy is just as important as how much energy you use. Clean Power SF customers can save by using less energy during the peak times of 4 to 9 p.m. For example, do higher energy chores before 4 p.m. or after 9 p.m. We will talk about some other tips in the next slides. There are also actions you can take at home that can help you reduce the amount of energy you use. This can help reduce your bill costs, especially, especially during the winter months. You can turn off your thermostat, your thermostat before opening windows for ventilation or cooling. Check the temperature of your refrigerator and consider setting it to 38 degrees. Refrigerators typically consume the most energy of all kitchen appliances. You can use fans or space heaters instead of a central thermostat whenever possible. This works best if you use a fan or space heater only in the room where you are. Say if you are working from home and you can park your space heater right next to where you're sitting for the day. Your oven uses more energy than any other appliances. Try cooking using a stovetop or a microwave whenever possible. You can wash only full loads of laundry and switch your temperature setting from hot to, to warm or cold. Most of the energy used for washing clothes is used to heat the water, and most detergents work just as well with cold water these days. You can also unplug electronics when not in use or use a power strips for all your appliance to turn them off easily and all at once. We know that that was a lot of tips to throw at you all at once. So here's a quick summary. Check the hour before using power. Schedule high energy uh, activities such as dishwashing, uh, laundry, and charging a lot electronics before p.m. or after 9 p.m. to avoid the peak electricity rates. Keep it cool. Most energy is used for heating and cooling purposes. Reduce your electricity use by opening windows during hot weather or keeping them closed during cold weather. Washing clothes on cold cycles can help as well. Use small appliances. When possible, cook in a toaster oven instead of a full regular oven. Or warm up by putting a space heater where you are uh, instead of turning up the central thermostat to heat the entire whole apartment. Smaller appliances use less electricity. Also, plug electronics into power strips and turn them all off when not in use. These electronics continue to use energy even when they're plugged in. When when they're plugged in and turned off, that is. So that includes today's presentation. I'll now turn it over to Jackie Randazzo, who will help facilitate our question and answer session. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jackie Randazzo, and I'm a senior communication specialist for power here at the SFPUC. So now we're going to open it up for Q&A, as John mentioned based on all the questions that you submitted in the chat. So thank you so much for submitting. We recognize there's been quite a few, so thank you. We'll do our best to answer them and as many as we can with the time remaining. So I'm going to start with our first question and John, I'm actually gonna uh, send this question over to you first. It's about energy efficiency. We had someone ask any tips on how to keep my bill lower if I do a lot of baking or cooking, does that impact my bill much? 
I would say that you are, one is using your oven to do that, um, uh, giving that you're baking. And if you could try to do, to bake in batches, in other words, uh, multiple cookie sheets or uh, um, in the oven at the same time. And that way you could just limit the amount of time that you have the oven going. Um, you are needing to use a certain temperature for whatever the recipe calls for. Um, but just be sure that you use the oven to its best ability in terms of having it uh, bake the things that you want all at once or as many things baked at the same time as possible when you're done of course turn off the, the oven promptly and open the door and let it heat your home a little bit um, when it's turned off don't let that waste hot air don't let that go to waste great thanks john um, I think another thing I'll add is if this person is a clean power SF customer, right? We talked about when you use energy is just as important as how much. So if you can do your baking maybe more in the morning or if you're a night owl and want to do it late at night after 9 p.m., that is also a good way to lower your cost if you do a lot of cooking and baking. Um, I think another option too is uh, using smaller appliances as well. John obviously just talked about how to use the oven more efficiently, but perhaps you can use a toaster oven or something like that that uses less energy. Good luck with baking. Um, our next question is actually about um, our NEM bill. So someone is asking, can you do an overview on how to read the bill as a NEM customer? And NEM stands for Net Energy Metering which is a little bit of a mouthful, but this is a bill for our customers that have solar on their roof. So they have solar panels. So similar to the residential bill that we went over, your energy bill still comes from PG&E and it includes both Clean Power SF and PG&E electrical charges in addition to PG&E gas charges. So during this webinar, as you saw, you know, we covered what we thought was most important um, on the residential bill for the average customer. If you are a NEM customer, we do encourage you to contact us and we're happy to walk through your bill. If you have more questions, um, especially about um, the longer kind of electric detail of bill report, which is quite lengthy, we're happy to walk uh, through that as well. And if you would like to receive that in a PDF format or anything like that, that is handled by PG&E, and so we do recommend contacting them specifically for that. But good question. Okay, I'm going to move to this next one. This will either be for John or Sid, so you two can fight over the response here. Um, this is also about energy efficiency. This person is asking, how does hot water impact the bill? Is heating water and electricity or gas cost, and is it separate from the water bill? I'll take that. Uh, heating hot water takes a lot of energy. Um, as I think was mentioned during the presentation, for example, when you run a load of laundry on hot water, most of the energy used to wash those clothes is the hot water, not the mechanical uh, uh, use of the uh, machine. Hot water is either heated by gas or electricity and whatever, whatever you have in your home. So it's good not to let hot water run through the faucet when you don't need it. And uh, that would be one important tip. And I know that for many residential customers, uh, for Hetch Hetchy Power in particular, they don't pay for their own hot water. It's provided by the building. That's not always true, but it is often true. Um, but it is always a good idea to limit the amount of hot water you use. Don't waste any. And as we mentioned before, for clothes washing, the detergents these days work just as well with cold water as they do with hot water. So that's one way to save energy on hot water. Some uh, residential units also uh, have on-demand 
heating systems, whether gas or electricity. And what that means is that the water is heated up only when you use it. In most uh, facilities, you have a hot water heater, a tank that holds hot water on standby. And oftentimes, uh, if you have a hot water heater tank, that you can insulate it so that there are not what are called standby losses, where just to keep that water warm all the time, there's some energy consumed in that. So insulating your water heater can also be a big hit, big tip. Great, that was really thorough. I don't know, Sid, do you have anything to add to that? That was a pretty good response. Uh, I think John nailed it. Great, thank you. Uh, we did have a question about someone asking if um, senior citizens get a rate break or maybe a discount on their bills. I think we did answer this one in the chat, but perhaps um, John, since I know you covered a lot of discount programs, can you maybe just reiterate a few on the Clean Power SF side and the Hetch Hetchy Power side that perhaps this person could take advantage of? I don't know of any programs that are specific to seniors. However, if you're a senior on a limited income, um, just about any of the programs that we talked about that offer a discount, um, most of them are qualifying based on your income and the number of people living in your unit. So if you're a senior on a limited income, there's a very good chance you'll, you will qualify for the CAP program uh, uh, with Hetch Hetchy or the CARE-FERA program and all the additional programs uh, if you're a PG&E and Clean Power SF customer. Great, thank you for that. Um, someone else was asking about an explanation of all the PG&E light items or surcharges on the bill and what they stand for. Uh, we recognize there are a lot of um, extra line items and it can be confusing Again, we encourage you to call uh, the numbers provided to get more of an explanation. We also have an understanding your bill PDF on our Clean Power SF website that you can also access as well. Um, again, I probably won't go into too many of the details here, but again, some examples that Joanne quickly mentioned earlier in the webinar was the franchise fee charge, surcharge, which is a fee collected by PG&E to pay for the right to use public streets to run gas and electric service. Um, another line item is the SF Prop C tax surcharge um, that's also collected by PG&E. So again, it can be a little confusing. We do encourage you to give us a call or check out some additional resources on our website as well. Let's see, I'm just kind of looking here at the chat um, as well. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Um, Joanne, maybe I can put this one to you as well. Um, someone is asking, do all tariffs, so I think electric rates, have the same peak, partial peak, or off-peak structure? Can you kind of get into that a little bit? Sure. Um, so depending on which rate schedule you are on, there are different hours for peak and off peak. So for ETOUC, which is what most residential customers in San Francisco are on, it's 4 to 9 p.m. But there are some other uh, rate schedules that are slightly different times. And then for businesses, there are some peak, partial peak and um, off peak hours as well. So it just really depends on your rate schedule. So I would recommend checking out PG&E's website to take a look at that. And it should say also potentially on your bill, which hours are peak and off peak as well. Great, thanks so much, Joanne, really appreciate that. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one or two um, more questions. Um, someone is asking, why is my rate the same if I am on vacation and not using either gas or electric? Uh, maybe Joanne, can I put that one back to you? Sure. Um, your rate schedule shouldn't be changing when you are on vacation, um, but maybe just trying to unplug as many appliances as possible, making sure to turn off any power strips. Like when I go on vacation, I try to make sure to like turn off my air filters, unplug those, or like the air fryer things that I usually keep plugged in, um, just making sure to turn those off and unplug them. Great, perfect. Thank you for that. 
Um, so I think our last question um, is a good one. Someone was asking, how is it determined if you have Clean Power SF or Hetch Hetchy Power Service? Um, is that just based on your location or can you choose which one you want if you already get one of those? So that's a great question. Um, I think just at a high level, the first way you can determine whether you're a Clean Power SF or Hetch Hetchy Power customer is where your uh, electric bill comes from. So as we kind of talked about in this webinar, if you are a Hetch Hetchy Power customer, your energy is coming from the SFPUC and Hetch Hetchy Power, and we handle the billing for that. So if you get a bill that has the SFPUC and Hetch Hetchy Power on your bill, you are a Hetch Hetchy Power customer. As a reminder, Hetch Hetchy Power serves a lot of affordable and public housing in the city, as well as some uh, newer private, de uh, private developments, um, generally in the Southeast portion of the city. If you are a uh, Clean Power SF customer, you are receiving your bill from PG&E since they handle the billing portion of the electric service. Um, again, we kind of went through the details of the bill. So I really encourage you to look at your PG&E bill and make sure you see a line item for Clean Power SF. That is a good way to determine if you are a Clean Power SF customer. Um, again, as always, if you have questions or can't find anything, again, please give us a call. Um, it is important to note though that most residents and businesses in San Francisco currently can't be served by Hetch Hetchy Power um, at this time. As we mentioned, Hetch Hetchy Power typically provides electric uh, service at the building level. Whereas for Clean Power SF, uh, we can serve at the unit or account level. So that's like an apartment, for example. Typically, Hetch Hetchy Power serves buildings that receive city funding and is on city property. Um, and that's because Hetch Hetchy Power has the first right of refusal to serve these customers. So that is kind of currently how the situation plays out. Since we share the grid with PG&E, right, since PG&E owns the grid in San Francisco, there are limitations when it comes to serving more entities at the building level. Because PG&E owns the electric grid in San Francisco, um, as I just mentioned, PG&E ultimately gets to tell us how we, who we can serve and how. So currently we have to rely on them to use and connect um, our public power customers to the grid. Um, as you maybe might imagine, unfortunately this can be a little bit frustrating as they sometimes delay and make it nearly impossible um, for us to do so. So that is why um, the city of San Francisco, along with us here at the SFPUC, is really pursuing public power at this time. Um, and that means us purchasing the grid uh, from PG&E here in San Francisco. And so by owning this grid uh, under local power, public power ownership of this grid, we could deliver uh, clean Hetch Hetchy power to everyone. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I definitely recommend you check out publicpowersf.org. So we are just nearly at time. I think we're gonna go to some uh, closing slides. If Elisa, you could pull up the rest of the slides. Thank you. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining this webinar. Um, again, we'll just close here with a few slides. We threw a lot of information out at you and a lot of links. Um, if you are interested in learning more, I highly encourage you to visit uh, a lot of these links here on the screen. Again, you can get more information about Clean Power SF or Hetch Hetchy Power, additional ways to uh, reduce your electricity use, so, so, so um, some more energy efficiency tips, and then other ways to lower your bill. So a lot of those discount programs uh, that John went into. And again, if you're interested in learning more about our efforts to expand public power here in the city, highly encourage you to check out publicpowersf.org. Um, and as we mentioned, again, we're here to help. So please feel free to give us a call, email us, or visit our websites. You can see more of the information here on the screen. So again, thank you so much for attending. I want to thank our speakers for their time today. I want to thank all of you again for joining. Uh, we want to hear from you, though. Did you find this valuable? What did you like or maybe didn't like? Please fill out our short survey. Um, it will be dropped in the chat. We really appreciate your feedback. So thank you again and enjoy the rest of your Thursday.